Once I'm like in the airplane, it creates an actual bodily response. Like my heart beats so fast and I am just almost like a panic attack. Well, actually I've had many of those, but from that, like how do I react to uh, slow that you, down? You, you can, yeah. By now, a space will, will be open in you whereby you are more aware of yourself at the witnessing place. And just, and it, it's, 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 it's not anything that's happening. The witnessing place is not a happening place. You know, everything is just moving in that. And there's a silence in there that you can just keep uh, present with there. Another thing that uh, is good also, that whatever you hear, whatever you hear, by the time you recognize it, it's already passed. Whatever you hear, whatever you see, they, they, it just, I don't know if you, just, if you can relate to this, but whatever you perceive, it's already passed. You know? Everything is just, is just passing. If you, if you follow that, you'll notice a stillness in you, which is your real place. It's, whatever is passing is not you. Whatever is happening, it, it's not you. You know? And you say and like. I mean, there are some things that we we get conditioned into, like, if for instance, um, I notice, I don't know, sometimes you can say that maybe from some previous life or something, something may have happened that lingers as some kind of seed in the in your conditioned behavior. Like for myself, if I go to the edge of a very high building, I feel this funny feeling in my knees, yeah. and it's got to call it vertigo or something. There's nothing to kind of stop that. You know, you cannot. That's not true. That's not true. You can uh, you can do some tr some practice to stop that. There are people who work with this, who work with kind of phobias and things like that, because they are much more in the conditioned part of our being. It's not in the you of you, you know, but it's part to do with our the mechanism of the body mind life. You know, something is some conditioning might be there for a while, and um, you know you can actually do like a day even with there are some people who work with this you know and they help you just to you know if you have a if you have a huge fear of snakes or yeah. or you know a fear of being attacked there are people who can talk you through and can change just you know, where you are in yourself with it and it makes a huge difference also but now uh, i'm going to tell you to, to just be, you're going to be more easy because you are able now to find a place that for a long time you were not so aware of, uh, that place which is a non-happening place. When I say um, every happening is a blip in the immensity of the non-happening, yeah? it, it, you, you can relate to that? Yeah. Well, and you said something about like if you keep living, I don't know exactly the words, but if you live in your projections, you can be experiencing something that hasn't even happened yet. And yeah. for me, that's where my anxiety comes to play, yeah. especially with airplanes, because I live in that fear. Like I'm living in it like it's the moment, and it just takes away from any calmer peace I have in the present. Yes. And it's a, a waste. The space of, of the awareness energy. itself will, um, and you'll find that the more you you're on. You're on. You're in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, gradually, you feel it more, more. The presence, more of your of the presence, you know? and something just becomes calm, more calm with that. Um, in fact, you know, fears and things like this they help you to find your truth. Because without them, you don't have any motivation or incentive to look. Things that really stir us up is important to help us to look. You know. And they are the, they are the, they are like a little bit like um, enzymes for for real introspection. You know, when you're shaking up some some strong experience, some some dis something you feel is disturbing, it it really propels you to go in and to to go to the place beyond the reach of these things. So they 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 really help. You know, and everybody has their own something that keeps the consciousness from sleeping or becoming complacent or becoming because to be too comfortable in phenomenality is not good you understand i mean like 
Something. The mind wants you to be comfortable and safe in phenomenality, but that is not a good thing. And uh, a lot of people even become afraid of what they can't control, and that's uh, and that's most of life you can't control. Mm. Uh, it, it wants to. It really um, uh, exaggerates this feeling of the of control, like you have control and take control of your life and all this type of stuff rather than you know rest in your being and watch life flow you know there's there's a flow that's happening it was good that it says you know, like even in the bible that you know everything was created everything was created um, before man came so that he doesn't get the arrogance of claiming that he's the cause of it you know? mm-hmm. he simply joined in and that uh, human beings i say that they are not they are not the the possessors of or controllers of consciousness. We are an expression of consciousness. So these things put because this um, this this feeling we have this this is me, the me that is shaped out of our body mind conditioning, is not your true is your true self. And uh, God brought you here to know that, and to de- it's going to continue deepening in that understanding, until really the grip. Of the delusions, they, they they start to drift away, and they do actually. It really does, and uh, that you you outgrow some concepts and some some stages of uh, um, reaction and interaction and identity. They they just leave. You know? yeah. I feel like we can all testify from living here, yeah. watching this guidance yeah. that yeah. that happened so clearly. What time is your flight? 10:25 tomorrow. 10:25 tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Okay. I'm going to remember that. And uh, I'm going to come sit with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a huge fear and always, well, since I became scared of them at like 15, I used to always fly and then just one flight something switched and it's not even the fear of dying that I'm scared of. It's just the f- I'm afraid of being terrified. <laughs> like the you know, yes. it's like once I'm, it's not even the death part; it's just the terrifying part before yeah, that. Afraid to be, af- yeah, afraid of fear or something. And it's so uh, you can live that, and like it's taken me from so many trips and things. It's, it's really amazing how uh, things really are experienced very differently from how you imagine. You know, because uh, I saw some things. Where things have happened, where you think, "Wow, that must have been so horrible," and what uh, happened is that if something is overbearing, the consciousness just becomes unconscious. You know? the more they say, "Conscious," something changes. Like mm-hmm. sometimes a great calm, you know, calm and you know, different things. It's never what you ex- you expect, and actually, the 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 fear and the anticipation. Is greater than the than the actuality. Oh, yeah. Very often of things, no? but the focus is not about oh changing the fear more, but using that to to find what is beyond the fear. That's very important. I like that you speak so openly about it. And, uh, you know. There's always something. In the in the mechanical consciousness, in the the body mind functioning, that will create uh, some turbulence in those states, no? and because they they cannot themselves exist without the underlying consciousness, so we experience things, but the the the, the depth and the force of the impact and so on changes inside. Because you cannot not feel anything. It's not, you know, you can feel something, but somehow the kind of uh, becoming completely disturbed and shuffled up uh, that will change. Like something you come more and more to recognize the um, to recognize uh, that which is untouched. And it's not just for the moment of leaving your body. It's even like you say, you're living, you're living in answered prayers. You're living in the state of grace every day. You know, 
the peace, the perspective, the the distancing between phenomenal play and and where you are. You know, all of this is already taking place. It's not just for later. Everything mm. is the food is now. Yes. But I just want to remind you that you know, when we have uh, exper- when we experience things that feel like they're very um, challenging or painful or you know intense, make use of them because they reveal that within ourselves which is still to be looked at, and not with cynicism, not with disgust, not with kind of impatience, but just to say, yeah, you know, the universe is helping to to look. At where there are seeds hidden, where there might have been some blind spot which you don't notice, then in those moments it, 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 everything becomes like the glass house, and you begin to see where you know where things are happening internally which are not uh, in service to the truth, and just to is no blame. It's just to, to to highlight them, and to offer them, or to bring them into your inquiry. You know? And to keep looking, but wait a minute, they are phenomenal, and you have to know what that means beyond a mental comprehension. It means that it is, it is apparent, but it is not your translation. It is not your interpretation. So, so it's 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 um, no two people are experiencing in the same way, even though. We are standing on the station, and a train goes off, and we, are, we don't we don't experience it the same way. So you cannot say that what you're experiencing is um, is a fact, because for someone else, you know, you may say, "Wow, that was so dangerous," and when they go, "Wow, it was so much fun," so that, you know, like, "Wow, nothing happened." Man. What are you talking about? From the mind energy, um, it wants you to find a, a kind of um, a safety that is phenomenal. There is no safety as phenomenal. Uh, it wants you to be secure in phenomenality. Uh, uh, so this is why, for so many people, we try to be comfortable with things because that's really the option, um, or to. Have a good marriage, or have children, or have money, or things like this. Things which are all perishable. Nothing you can have like this, ultimately. So that uh, when the trials and tribulations come, I'm speaking like this because I feel that we need to change our attitude towards them. Because our culture <clears throat> is in some way encouraging us to regard these things as though they are curses or something or bad luck. You see. Whereas for me, I say that they are instruments for transcendence. It gives you a chance to, to, really, to, to, to. You you have to have your phenomenal dreams crushed. Otherwise, you don't uh, you don't push deeply enough to awaken to really the miracle of existence, which is within your own self. So these things they come and they they provoke a lot of insecurity and so on. But it's healthy because. It's insecurity about the phenomenal. You cannot be insecure about the nominal, about what is real, because there is nothing to be even secure about. It's beyond secure and insecure. It's just, it's just what is. You know, everything else, even in the manifest world, nothing is stable. Everything is a cloud passing. And it's fine as well. There's a beauty in that. In the phenomenal world of time and change and shape, things are phenomenal necessarily because they are changeful, and change is very natural for the phenomenon. You know, and uh, the trouble is that when we are not aware of ourselves as the unchanging, we try to preserve things in the changeful, which feels good for us, to us, and then when they pass, we suffer. But that's going against the law of nature, you know, because things will, good and bad will come and go. If good doesn't come and go, bad cannot come and go. So, if you're living primarily with the conditioning 
of trying to create security in the phenomenon within the realm of change, you're going to suffer. Of course, you have to suffer. And you know, human beings are allegedly the most uh, intelligent species on this planet, you know, because we are not the only beings in all of creation, in all of the universe, but uh, we are still relatively quite naive. And we are researched, all our energies have gone into researching phenomena. But about the nominum, we don't know. It's amazing. You know, you can have a scientist that can create, or an inventor can create vessels that can go to other planets, but uh, don't know how to sit quietly with their own self. You know, haven't found the beauty of that. And uh, so, it's, it's important the way these things they come. And everybody, we should never think that somebody is unblessed because of the kind of you know, challenge that they come. You see? Now look at uh, Janu. Janu is walking now. He's got a limb now with his uh, leg. He's got a, this limp. And I spoke to him, and people say, Oh, like, uh, I'm so sorry. I hope it heals quickly. And his attitude was like, No, it's okay. Because I regard this as blessing for me also. Because with this, I have to stop. I spend more time reflecting. I come to see that I have received a gift. And it's a gift because also it is changing, it's healing, but it gives him time to slow down and to. You see? So <clears throat> I feel very often what's happening, we're suffering from, from mislabeling our experiences, calling them negative and bad luck and things, when actually they're opportunities that you, your soul needs them. To, to to aspire and to transcend. Otherwise we are, you know, you're running on a treadmill, you're not going anywhere. You're running only to attain perishable things and not discovering the imperishable within your own self. So of course when people come and they ask, please can you pray for this person? I do also and we do. You know, because that there's also a power in that, and it's not just oh, just make this person better, but make them better also in spirit and in their in their in their heart. Um, it's not just to heal the body like that, but that they you pray that they derive the the highest outcome from this experience. Uh, when we make use of these. Um, life challenges or you know and you're proven you've gone beyond that place and then there's no need for them to come again the new things are to come in another way or something but they don't come out of spite god doesn't send things to you out of spite sometimes he releases a bit of your karma and it's enough. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Everything is just so resonating. And I, I wanted to check in with you because it feels like the seeing has really deepened, and like the eye watching has been very alive. Um, and and yet I can see like it's almost like the mind is fighting back in a yeah. way that. I mean, it just, but it's 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 seen in a new way also, mm. and um, I can like some old Vasana or some life challenges have been coming up, and I really feel in a way like I've been tested. I know it's good, and I just tell me what your eyes that you're referring to. Slow down and yeah. and, uh, and and really mm, introduce what is the eye that you are relating as yourself. The one who's being tested by the mind and so on. There's no cynicism about the question, by the way. It's just an opportunity to look and to, to, to verify is that who you're calling yourself? Because of course we are going to be tested, the, the sense of our dynamic existence, where we have feelings and desire, where we where we have the we have the privilege, we have the opportunity to experience desire and and judgment and discrimination and to use your discernment and to all of this we, we, we will try it. But you must understand what it is 
that you are in that mode? The, the, uh, the multiple choice question again. It, it, I, as I was sharing a moment ago, I could feel it was personhood. Mm -hmm. I was referring in that moment to my eye, it was from a place of more identity. And, uh, the reason why I said that because you use a term um, that you've been getting stronger in eye watching. Yeah. Yes, eye watching is a very, very powerful yes. of all the different sort of sadhanas and all different kind of spiritual practices. Eye watching is amongst the highest. What it means is that whenever you feel I, and when is it that you don't feel I, almost every conversation, everything to do with yourself starts with a feeling of I. Even it is stronger than the feeling about you, because you only bears relevance in association with I. It is the I that refers to you as you. No you refers to itself as you. It is I, no? So this what we start from the sense of I. It's very important that we discriminate to find what is this I. Is it personal? Is it the witnessing consciousness? Or is it the impersonal consciousness? And just by watching this, without trying to fix anything, your life comes back into harmony. Because every time you go and you find that my I, when I speak as this I, it's personal. Yes. And then you have the choice of is that satisfying to keep on relating to life from a personal standpoint? Bearing in mind that the person is also is not stable. The voice and the belief of the person is not stable. It is, you know, and what knows this also? It means that a deeper consciousness is aware of the personal. And put yourself in the place of the deeper consciousness, which is aware of the personal. And as soon as you see that you're getting involved with uh, the traffic rather than simply um, observing it neutrally and with detachment. As soon as you feel pulled into it, you must cut the umbilical cord to that thought. That's what eye watching really is. So that uh, you know you're not you're not building up this kind of cholesterol of identity. And, uh, and that's what I mean by eye watching. If you don't watch this eye, because you're cutting things at their root, if you're watching the feeling of eye, you're cutting their potential trouble at the root. If you miss that opportunity, you're already trying to swim in, swim in deep water, because then your eye has taken on the form of the person, and the person is a troublemaking machine. It will always be suffering from some mode of, you know, feeling of rejection or neediness or judgment or hatred or desire, attachment, memory, longing, projection, fully in time. It's very, very. You're you're in the ICs in a dinghy. You understand. So you really need to 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 quickly, and I'm not saying oh I'm in high seas paddle back to shore. I'm saying no, cut it. Because that ability is in you to look and to see, wait a second, no, 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 but you know, dismount. Yes. Don't be, you know, galloping off yes. on the back of I as a person. Yes. But can you relate though, yes. all of you, to, to, to this for these examples? Because it's in actually um, it is so practical. When I speak of spirituality or whatever, I don't speak spiritually, even just about truth. It must be very practical. Practical. It must be immediately applicable, and immediately. Uh, when I say this is a tree that bears immediately bears fruit, I mean that as you see uh, somehow, and you change your position from where that you're referring to yourself as. You see, and how far can you go with that? If you are not the person that you have been living in the delusion. Or the dream state in this person of it, then where are you now? You say, okay, fine. Now I'm witnessing that. I can witness that now. But uh, this, uh, the person, you know, sense might now it's it's fallen, but it's still radioactive. Okay, so you don't want to be touching that really as much as you can, and you keep just staying in a place of weakness. And already your world and your space has, exp has opened up so much. You're going to be much calmer, 
much naturally happy, even out the feeling, oh, I'm now I'm being happy. No, you're just naturally happy, much more spacious, much more intelligent. Your intelligence come is coming up, wise and uh, um, compassionate also. These are the fruits of the of the self, the dynamic self. Then, if you, the more you stay like this, and you love it also. You love this, uh, this this way of being because, of course, if you have the choice the choice of loving the world or hating it, you have to choose of loving it. If, at least, especially if you have the experience of it, then only gradually, as you come to see that, wait a second. But even the weakness, although it's a much more elevated and expansive state, is also weaknessable. This gradually comes in. You know, it must not come in prematurely. It must come in. It's gradually coming in. Natural is a natural progression. And then now you're in the indescribable state. You cannot describe. And uh, your tongue will become heavy for words, unless God is living in your tongue. <laughs> you know, you're happy being by yourself more. And somehow, even with it, without having physical contact with the world, particularly, your presence is benefiting it, just like that. It's very beautiful. Mm. So again, this eye watching is very powerful. If anybody wants to make a practice, eye watching will be. You see, yeah. Then you come at some point and say, "What is watching eye even?" What is watching I? Does it have a shape, does it have a form? And, and you, can, you can actually receive living answers to these questions, no? not theoretical answers. The living answers mean you are the one who is always, you are the one who is always here. You remove the, the heavy garment of ego, you are still here. You are even more here. You remove the garment of all these things, you are still here. You can never not be here. But uh, even in ego, you are here. When you take off the face of ego, you are still here. Before you think, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm still here. You take off every face and you are still here. You take off the face of form and of shape and concept, you are still here. But not in the old way, not in the way of thinking. Yes, and Babaji, by your grace, I feel the, the um, personal identity has been more observable. It's been easier and quicker to observe it, and just this feeling of um, confirming more as in the, the presence, yes. and just this prayer to for the uh, <coughs> this observing to to strengthen and deepen. And you know, it's, it, it's naturally happening also. If you love God, if you love the same as presence, and if you're loving the. Mm, it's actually the absence of ego. Anybody who is beginning to feel the absence of ego, you're already in love, basically. You know? Because it's a love that you don't have to make. You know, the love is, a, is the perfume of your being. So it's, it's a natural healing, it's a natural evolving, expanding, widening, panoramic sort of. You, you feel it, no? It's not something you're thinking anymore. When you're in ego state, you think a lot. When you're in a heart state, you are more feeling and intuiting more. You know? So, why we speak? Because. Uh, we are we are lacking in presence. When you're in presence, you don't have to speak. Human beings don't really need to speak if they know God and they're in presence actually, because their presence speaks it. Their presence becomes the, the the evidence of the truth. Not just their body, just like in our higher state, no? we 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 can be with each other and we know each, who each other are beyond person. No? We talk a lot because we haven't, we haven't, we are not living in our truth. So we try to make up for it with words and to say, oh, you know, stories and so on. The more you come to consciousness, the less you need story. The more you go into story, you go back into person. 
because consciousness has no history. Only the person has history. You see? You're noticing these things more and more, you know? Because in this state, you know, it's like just as your body grows even when you're sleeping, even when you're sleeping, your consciousness is expanding in the true way. You see? So, um, your natural state, always you're starting from emptiness. You know? Everything is from emptiness. When I say that every happening, any happening, is a movement in time and a shape, form, and time, name, form, time. And every happening is only like a blip in the infiniteness of the non happening. Meaning that your natural background is non happening. Until you uh, become aware of yourself as pure consciousness, it's the only time you're going to be at rest. It means that you are in zero. Zero is just a terminology now. No? As long as you're in personhood, you're in restlessness. The person is like a gear of consciousness. You're always in gear always up to something, something new. When you're in the neutrality of consciousness, it's like you can, you can see and feel no? what I mean by rest. There's not even something resting, so it's even deeper than rest. Yeah? Rest means, I was tired, now I've rested. The consciousness is never tired, so it doesn't need rest, it just is. But we don't have a word in our hu human vocabulary for that, so we say, uh, you are at rest. But it's greater than rest. It just is. And no one, in, while in the state of personhood, knows what it means, is or to be. We don't know it. We don't know it. Uh, God give us the metaphor of sleep, the non-cognitive consciousness, hmm? to give you a little sense of what it is, meaning that there you are without your person or relationship or belief system, you are without all these things, no? and you wake up refreshed because of that. You are not thinking you have no relatives, you have no intention, you have no memory, nothing at all. And what is the benefit of that state? You got rest. So it's telling you that you don't need all that stuff to be at peace. But while we are in the dynamic state of personhood, we are always creating, creative, we love creativity, and that's fine. Part of our expression in the dynamic is to be creative. Now, all this is God's create creativity. It's not creation, it is creating. Because creation is like a noun, isn't it? Like that. No, it is constantly renewing itself. No? And yet, there is something effortless in it. And when we use our mind, we come more into the field of effort. And that, uh, maybe I've said too much already. It's enough, you know. Uh, little, little bite-sized pieces, well chewed and swallowed, is better than, you know, too much. And last thing, all your introspections, your conversations, your contacts, your all of that should always end in emptiness. You even start it in emptiness, expressed in emptiness, end in emptiness. Yeah. There's nothing there, no collection. You don't need any collection. You see? And therefore when you have no background, it is consciousness speaking and not the mind. And we grow in confidence that you don't, because the mind tells you, you need to prepare, you need to get into it, you need to do it. You know? And so, if you buy into that uh, idea of the need to prepare, the need to practice for life, it will suffocate your spontaneity. You will not have faith in the spontaneous. You see? So, just uh, may the quintessence the living quintessence of what I'm sharing, and may that detonate inside you.
uh, combust, combust into a spirit. I just want to say like a big yes to what you're speaking. Yeah. It's a big yes, and also that just like the may just the practicality just may it completely combust here. Yes. And see, there's also a tendency to make it all complicated and eye watching and self inquiring. Something gets so mental and blah 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 blah. And just don't reject that yet. Don't don't reject that because there's something in that, but some of it is is being hijacked by the mind. The mind will hijack something good and make you feel bad about it. Yeah, remember sometimes you you maybe meet someone who is in need of help right now. And you help you 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 serve them, and your mind goes, yeah, I really feel good about it now, don't you? And stuff, and you think, no. And then you say, no, I don't want to help anyone, because my mind is just goes, oh, you know, you want another start today, and blah 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 blah. You cannot throw everything out. You have to know what to throw out. That is discernment. He wants to turn something that is good and innocent into something negative. You don't let it. So, yeah, you. Identify the part which is not true, and uh, slice it and push them off, and stay. Because suppose you say, "I'm not ever going to try and help people anymore because my mind just comes in." Yeah, the mind is laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Just, um, just saying about the blessings from the injuries or something like that. Like I had my wisdom tooth out on Thursday, and so I've been really restless and not sleeping well. And but I was just noticing how much, like I was actually, uh, it allowed so much projections and problem solving and restlessness and mental activity that I really was in me and unchecked. And and I just pray that like the blessing from from this uh, is. That I can see that identity and that, that I wasn't. If you get a kind of mind tsunami, eh, I give you a tip: don't try and fix it. Uh, it's better that you. Sometimes you need a, a mind tsunami to find your stillness, because it's too much to try and get right. You can't do it. So don't try and. Oh, what should I do? No, no, no. no. That I just adds to the turbulence. No. You feel it, just let it just just leave your existence to existence. Let it all bubble away. There's something that is not caught in the tornado of those kind of thinking. And you must identify that. That's all. That's the most practical thing I can tell you. you know? So again, because we each feel sometimes <gasps> there's you know, it's like the 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 mind or the devil, whatever you want to call it, you know, is having a field day and it's just everything is going wrong and all your thoughts and you're not gonna do this and how many things you have to put right, you don't have the time, you don't have the you know, blah 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 blah. And then if you don't uh, if you're not still in yourself, because I'm gonna tell you why they come, why these things come is for you to find your stillness. Not to fix your state. You cannot fix it. Because one it's not true. The mind can only attack you, or you want to say the devil energy can only attack you um, when you go into your person, because it cannot attack your purity. It can only attack your distraction. And when you're distracted, it means that you know you're listening as though you're the thing it's talking about. So when it comes like that and ah oh, this and then at the same time it can also have external manifestations too. If you're feeling bad inside yourself, you know life will take on your vibration, and then you find that people calling you and say, "Hey, I need my money! I need my money!" And you say, "What the hell is this?" When you find somebody you haven't paid for the last twenty years is calling you up, where did that come from? The same energy is bringing him. And then come, you go outside, and a dog comes. What the hell is going on here? Even the dog has something against me. It's all coming from the same tornado. Don't fix it. Step aside, and just—it's like you cut the umbilical cord to that, you know, and let it go on. Don't put energy trying to fix that. The more energy you try to keep to fix that, it pulls you into more person. Find the thing which is not that. The reason why you can know about this is because there's something that's not this. And uh, the fact that 
all this is going on is witnessable. You cannot be a true witness if you are involved in the thing you are witnessing. Find a thing which is not participating or trapped in the bubble of that storm. And just by not pulling the emergency button, but keeping quiet and just let it play, something will naturally come to find a place of stillness. Once you find a place of stillness, all that begins to go away. You can watch it prove, prove what I'm speaking. But once you begin to recognize, rather than getting all caught up and trying to put out fires, you just find that which is not this. Don't waste energy trying to put out these fires in the mind. And be patient to just sit there. Be patient, but not waiting. Then gradually you see, wait a second, the atmosphere is changing. Why? Because you made the higher choice. So it's not technique, you don't need any technique to be, but you may need a technique to try and remember not to get pulled into techniques or pulled into fight, fighting, you see. And uh, so these are very mm, practical guidances which are immediately applicable and immediately resolvable. You see. Just don't fight. You know? Something wants you to fight, you know? It's like you go to a boxing match and only one boxer show up. The devil is in the ring. <laughs> okay? The next fighter hasn't showed up, then what's going to happen? So it is like that. You are just audience to, to things. and uh, They are so practical. You, at this stage in your sadhana, things must be coming easier. I should be able to say one word, and that word makes up for a whole book of things. If I say, don't go into any shape, stay zero, watch the eye, all these things, we don't have to talk so much. You take it. Immediately it detonates, you know, it combusts into spiritual force, and that's it, you're out of it. Don't say, oh, I've beaten the mind and blah, blah, blah. This I again is is mind. Don't claim any victories. Just quietly keep looking. When you check for the sense of I in yourself, you should not find anything solid. Just a space of emptiness. And out of that emptiness, God speaks. If you want to speak, God will not speak. You must become first empty of you, then God will speak in your emptiness. You have to become a book with no words on it, then God might write something in it. This is what we are speaking. Thank you, everybody. Good, good. Nice, nice. So good.